This story begins in Britain in the year of 1971. Big in fashion at the time were bell-bottom trousers, massive collars on your shirt and platform shoes. It was the first year of the Glastonbury Festival featuring such artists as David Bowie and over in New York the concert for Bangladesh featured such luminaries as George Harrison, Eric Clapton and Bob Dylan. And somewhere in your house you probably had this pattern as wallpaper or maybe on one of those massive collared shirts. In the Great British pub things were also slowly changing with the tastes in the nation. Mild, once the great champion of the pub, was having its crown slowly stolen by the pale ale, more commonly known as a pint of bitter. Outside of pubs, there was a slow encroaching shift in the way beer was being transported and stored. The keg was becoming more and more popular as it was easier to keep and look after. Beer was becoming less and less produced by small local breweries who were being bought up by a group of six beer industry giants. These giants were taking over pubs and imposing their will upon them. Only their beers could be sold, pushing out the competition. Brew pubs, which were pubs that had a small brewery attached, were becoming obsolete and their numbers began to plummet. Along with it, beer that was once sold in casks was now repurposed and was now being sold in kegs. Easy to keep, easy to serve. Change was the name of the game. However, not everyone was entirely happy with the changes happening in pubs. Some drinkers thought that the traditional way of producing and transporting beer was still very valid and was part of the country's brewing heritage. And what's more, the new, pressurised, pasteurised beers just tasted different, a side effect of their production. And so, in a bar in Kerry, Ireland, four friends decided to take a stand against the so-called Big Six and stand up for the traditions of the brewing industry in pubs. On March 16th, 1971, they formed a group that would stand up for these traditional beers, the Campaign for the Revitalisation of Ale. The campaign had begun, and in 1972, in Nuneaton, a place I can guarantee that most of you have never heard of, the four and their friends held their first annual meeting, and in this year, they published the first issue of their newspaper, What's Brewing? Word spread quickly about this campaign to preserve beers served in casks, and just a year later, the group was now 5,000 members strong. In 1973, at their annual general meeting in London, a decision was made to change the name of the ever-growing movement. It was now going to be called the Campaign for Real Ale. With this change, they also coined the phrase Real Ale. It was going to be a catch-all term to encompass all those beers that they were campaigning to defend. The Pale Ale, the Mild, the Porter, the Stout, all beers that were brewed in a similar manner, delivered to pubs in casks, and pulled through beer lines with a beer engine. It seems they were also victims of their own success, as the campaign had attracted those from all over the country, and its ever-growing membership required them to create local branches. The next year, 1974, would bring a publication that would change up the gears for the movement, the 1974 Good Beer Guide. Rather than an amateur fanzine, this was an actual published book, and it listed pubs across the country that sold and maintained good quality cask conditioned beer, so that the ever-growing membership could always find a good pub with a good beer. 1975 would bring the birth of another great camera tradition, the first ever National Beer Festival. This would later become known as the Great British Beer Festival, and there was still much, much more to be done. The group continued to champion against all the big brewers, raising the profile of Cascale and the plight of pubs. Years and years of continued work finally paid off in 1989, when Camera were able to show the UK government just how much of the country's pubs and industry were controlled by the big six and the lack of choice that this afforded the average British drinker. This was the beginning of the end for these monopolies, as the government restricted the amount of tied pubs those were pubs who had to buy their beers from the Big Six that could be owned by these large companies. And as a cherry on top, pubs who were still under the Big Six's wings were now allowed, by law, to have at least one guest beer, beer not brewed by the company that they were tied to. This move by the government forced the Big Six to adapt and their solutions changed the shape of the pub industry to what it resembles now, with many different pub companies providing a variety of styles of venue, such as theme pubs, and of course, a greater selection of beer. But even though this was a great victory for camera, the campaign still had much to do. Though the shackles of tied pubs had been broken and loosed, 
and more and more breweries were being founded at a rapid pace, there was still a great battle to fight. Not against corporate monopolies, but against Castgale's greatest enemy, keg beer. Since the great hot summer of 1976, lager and cider had grown and grown and grown in popularity. By the 1990s, lager was the nation's favourite, outselling all other types of beer, regardless of its dispense method. So there was only one thing left for them to do, and that was to campaign for real ale. In 1992, they joined with two other similar organisations to form the European Beer Consumer Union and continued on their quest to protect pubs, small breweries and helping consumers by lobbying Parliament when it came to the issues of beer tax, either freezing it or lowering it, which in turn helped both brewers and publicans. Moving forward to today, the landscape of beer has changed yet again with the introduction of new storage methods such as the key keg and, in the last few decades, the phenomenon that was craft ale. There are now nearly 200,000 members of Camera, all fans of beers that come in casks like Stout and Pale Ale. They host the Great British Beer Festival in London every year, as well as many other smaller local ones. The annual edition of the Good Pub Guide is still yet to be released and is now seen as a badge of honour by pubs who want to show that they know their beer. Annual awards are held regionally and nationally to recognise both great pubs and great beers and produce the best in all the land. And after all these years, what's brewing is still sent to members, either by old school paper or email. Signing up with a campaign brings benefits and some of these benefits to members now include things like a set of vouchers for money off real ales in various venues and in some pubs showing proof of your membership will get you a discount off a of cask ale. Being a member will also give you bonuses at one of the many beer festivals they held, such as free entries, and will gain you discounts on any one of their publications. When it comes to their official stance on what they campaign for, their website states the following. To have quality real ale, cider and perry, and thriving pubs in every community, our mission is to promote and advocate the production, availability and consumption of quality real ale, cider and perry. Pubs and clubs as social centres and part of the UK's cultural heritage and the benefits of responsible social drinking. And so what four friends in a bar started nearly 40 years ago still continues to this day, still fighting for its cause. It's hard to underestimate their success either, changing the landscape of an entire industry and creating a movement all about the appreciation of a good beer is no mean feat, but yet there is still much for them to do. Mass market lagers, closing pubs, keg beer domination of dispense, all are still a challenge to rise up to, and if the last four decades have been any indication, the UK's largest single issue consumer advocate will rise to this challenge, ensuring that beer and cask will remain a part of British pubs, and that those small independent pubs will have a voice when they need one. All because four guys grabbed a real ale and kept asking questions. <laughs>